I currently serve as what's called a, a chief information officer, which is basically a head of IT or an IT director. Uh, and I work uh, for Thompson Hine, which is an Ohio, really an Ohio based law firm. We have four offices here and four in the uh, uh, East Coast, Atlanta and Chicago as well. And uh, so I've been in legal technology and technology in general most of my career, uh, both from a management perspective, but actually started my career as both a programmer and a data scientist in lots of different industries. So in addition to law firms, I've done work for uh, medicine and drug discovery, uh, financial services, and the government. I did that, quite a bit of work for the Air Force back in the day. Uh, so jumping in, what, what is an IT director? Uh, it really, first and foremost, it's, it's a senior management role. Uh, it is more about the business than the technology, uh, but you really do need to understand the technology and, and likely have earned your stripes as it were working in different technical fields before moving into a role. Uh, but it, it leads all things technology for an organization. And that can be everything from uh, managing the team, so career development, training, hiring, and, and so forth. Uh, definitely strategy and planning. So what is, what is the future of IT going to look like for your industry, for your organization? How can you help uh, that company remain competitive using technology? Uh, it's also a fair amount of finance, and, and I happen to like that. <laughs> Others may, may not as much, but it's a lot about uh, understanding uh, levers of cost, and uh, both budgeting for and then forecasting where that spend is going to be. Because in most organizations, technology is probably the second or third most expensive uh, resource outside of the people and the buildings or the equipment. Uh, we do a fair amount around user support and operations as well. And, and uh, I, I joke, I was the IT person growing up for my family and that has not changed in the 45 years. So I still get the call both from my family and then also from some of our partners in, in our firm saying, do you know how to do X? Uh, so it very much is part and parcel with an IT director. Uh, we do quite a bit as well, and this is part of my passion and area. We do a lot around applications. So the, the kinds of things, not just the desktop software and your productivity software and email and Word and those kinds of things, but the applications that are used on the manufacturing floor that are used by scientists, by attorneys, by others. And you really get a lot of uh, immersion into the domains of the industries that you're working in through the applications. And that's, that's really exciting. Uh, and then last, but definitely not least these days is security. Uh, I had actually some organizations in journal, you all know are, are at risk almost daily. Uh, and being in this seat now, I can attest really daily attacks from a variety of entities. The larger the organization, the higher the risk. Uh, and so there's a fair amount of both the cybersecurity, but also the people in process and the culture of awareness around being mindful, being uh, sort of security aware and making sure that, um, you know, the joke is your, your people are your weakest link, no matter how many systems and things that you have. If somebody clicks that link, then it can cause real, real harm to the organization. Uh, so it is a very broad brushstroke to give you an example in the, the firm where I'm at now. Uh, I have a team of about 60 professionals. Um, we're an organization of about 800 to 900 people, depending on how you count. So it's, it's the largest team uh, outside of our lawyers. And we support all of these things and more. So you really do have to, the, the key is you have to have a fairly broad experience base or a very strong team, often both, to be able to deliver on it. It's, it's a very broad mandate. Uh, the second piece that I'll mention is it's a lot of relationship management. So if you've ever heard or talked to uh, chief executive officers, sort of CEOs, CFOs, a lot of what we do is we manage uh, the relationships, not just within the organization, but also outside as well. So I have regular meetings. Uh, we'll get to a day in my life in a moment. We have regular meetings around. Uh, I you know, just got off a call with our chief operating officer and, and his direct reports. I meet with our executive committee. I meet with partners. So it's really sort of the executive team is, is our, my, our peer group. Uh, and additionally, I have uh, peers in finance and HR and sales that I work with weekly, if not daily. Uh, and then we have a wide range of vendors and suppliers and, and key partners that we have on the technology front. Um, so I very much am engaged in regular conversation. Okay. 
Uh, so what does that look like? The first, and particularly for an IT director, is in some ways you are always on. And that's not meant to scare anyone. It's, but it's the reality. It, it, you are proactive and strategic where you can be. But if there is a cyber threat, an attack that's active and ongoing, or there is a, a data center issue and services are not available, generally most companies are 24 by 7 shop, and therefore we are as well. So there is that expectation. I, I always uh, warn folks going into it to sort of set that it's not an eight to five kind of role. It doesn't mean that I'm working 24 by seven by any means, but it's one of those where the if an issue drops, you are on it. And that's the, the expectation. Uh, I, I joke now that I, I used to love writing software and being very technical. Now I live my life in meetings, email and presentations. Uh, that is the life I chose and I'm happy with it. Uh, but it is, you know, in person, virtual, it's everything from managing uh, our, our organization's finances uh, to working through projects and, and really key initiatives. How are things going? Are we rolling out that new system well? Are we running into issues? Those types of things. So it's, it's really, I like to say, it's more triage and crisis management. If everything is going well, I tend to say, okay, that's great we'll move on. So it's a lot of, it's a lot more of helping to solve problems that are, are rather challenging. And by the time it reaches usually an IT director in a larger organization, it's a fairly challenging problem that hasn't been solved by multiple layers of management previously. So it is, you know, some days can sort of be jumping from real fire to fire and, and be uh, stressful at times. Uh, we do a lot of department team meetings and partner engagement. I talked a bit about those and then also risk and crisis management. Uh, I will say one of the things I've found having been in roles like this over the past decade is, is the big shift that has happened is that IT directors used to be much more focused on infrastructure and just making sure the plumbing was working. Your servers were up, your network was up. Now, IT directors are viewed much more as how can technology set us apart from our competitors? What are the kinds of, you know, how can we leverage artificial intelligence or robotics or uh, knowledge management and search and all of these different kind of more strategic uh, challenges. And so it's definitely shifted from being more of an infrastructure role to being more of a, a strategic enabler. Uh, much more, you have to have a better sense of the practice of the, of the business that you're working with them. So what does a typical path look like? I'll say first, there's really no typical path. Uh, I know IT directors that have gone and gotten their PhDs and done a lot of research. And I know others that are veterans and have associate's degrees and have worked their way into, uh, into IT director roles. So there's no one path. Uh, most typically though, from an education perspective, uh, definitely a technical field that's no surprise. It doesn't necessarily need to be computer science. Uh, I know a lot of mathematicians and engineers that have transitioned into IT, particularly uh, over the past couple of decades as it's become more popular. Uh, graduate work is not required, I would say, in most instances. Um, I found it to be valuable for what I do, and I know several that have gone and gotten uh, MBAs, uh, uh, business degrees, and those types of things. Um, but it just depends on the type of role and the size of the organization. I, like I mentioned earlier, I don't know of many, if any, uh, IT directors that don't have some technical discipline and experience that they've done. Uh, that could be building software, it could be running a data center or being a security manager, something that's technical and hands-on is where they typically get their start. It's hard to jump in as say a, a solely a business person with no technical experience and try to run an IT organization. That, that's a bridge too far to build. Uh, I would say once you've sort of mastered a few of those technical disciplines, then moving into more of a management and supervisory roles and logical next step. This third bullet here, if this is a path that you want to go, I always encourage people try to focus on those special projects. They're usually sort of strategic initiatives that a, a firm has, it's, it's new, it's different, it's change, it's transformation. And those kind of projects, number one, they give you a spectacular experience, but also uh, they introduce, they help you build your network, you build some of those skills that you would need to be a modern IT director. All right, so 
I like to say that the, the technical skills are probably the, the least important when it comes to being an IT director. It's a lot around business acumen, meaning you, you understand what it's like to run a business, um, whether that's a profit center of a large company or you have experience as an entrepreneur or you have your own side hustle, whatever, like having some of that kind of experience helps you tie the impact of technology to what the company is trying to do, which is to make money. Uh, definitely having financial experience of some kind is important as well. Um, for me, what I've found is what, what used to be called soft skills, although I've started calling them core skills, they're the things that every person should have and, and IT folks are no exception. It's how to manage and lead people effectively. It's empathy and emotional intelligence. It's, it's relationship building. These are things that even as an individual contributor, as a software developer, you have to have these skills because we all work on large teams and the effective people are those that know how to work and, and understand and appreciate others' differences. Uh, communication is uh, essential. It doesn't mean that you have to be uh, an extrovert by any stretch. I'm not, even though it might seem like it, I'm not an extrovert. Um, but you have to build effective uh, communication skills so that you can get your message across. And that can be in different formats. I know very many IT directors that are understated, very calm, sort of very matter of fact, but highly effective at building uh, those relationships and sort of building trust within the organization. And then time management. Um, as I mentioned, my calendar is usually crazy. So figuring out ways to manage that and be effective is, is critical, no matter what role. Um, I won't go through each of the, the technical skills, but I, I, there's a concept that I learned a couple of years ago uh, called the T-shaped individual. Um, and you can picture a T, it's a capital T, I should add. Uh, the, t the top of the bar of the T is breadth. So having a broad brush stroke of a lot of different experiences. You don't have to go necessarily deep in all of them, but you've touched on, you have experience in all of these different areas. And then you usually have one or two areas that you really go deep on and you've built a sense of depth. Uh, so for instance, for me, uh, that depth really comes in when, it, uh, when you look at things like automation, artificial intelligence, data analytics, that was my, my sweet spot, what I did a lot earlier in my career, we'll talk about that in a moment. But, I then dabbled in and have a good foundational understanding of all these other elements. Okay. Um, so generally speaking, and this, this is broader than, and, and when I think about folks that are now looking to enter the workforce or entering in the next couple of years, what are the kinds of things that you need? Uh, you do have to have obviously a strong foundation in technology. It sort of goes without saying, but it is, I've seen people that have tried to take, go to a boot camp course, they, they spend a month, they learn a development skill, and then they jump right in. And there's so much foundational knowledge that they're, they're missing out on. Um, so I do think like having that, and it does not, it does not need to be a, an official degree. Uh, that's certainly like classwork certainly helps you get that broad foundation, but there are many different paths right now. There are uh, you know, alternative education, uh, uh, educational institutions, if uh, there are coursework available, and then just getting out there. And that's from an experience perspective. The, the best way to get involved is to start doing stuff. And that could be a hobby. It could be a part-time job. It could be a, a freelance gig. Um, there's a company that I've come to, to really love called Parker Dewey that sets up what are called micro internships. So it's sort of a, it's like freelance work as an internship and you get hands-on experience in a short bursts. You get to test and taste different kinds of roles. And then it gives you a better sense of what you would like to do in the IT, in the IT space. Um, so it's all about getting that sort of just getting that first taste, getting some experience and having a multidisciplinary approach to things as opposed to trying to jump in on one narrow, you know, one narrow topic and, and be done. Um, and then, yeah, attitude and communication, it, it goes miles and miles. Uh, having, a, a, having a growth mindset, like I, I can learn this, I have the better at this and just being positive and how can I help? Like those kind of things seem obvious and intuitive, but it is shocking how few people actually do that. Um, 
So I, I talk about being lifelong learning and things like that. So that, you know, that in a nutshell, that will set you on a, a good career path. And uh, like I said, it used to be with IT, you would go to get a college degree, you know, you'd maybe go get a master's or you would go into the trade and you work in a company for 10, 15 years and sort of rise progressively. It's more of a, instead of a career ladder these days, it's more of a career web. So you can, and I've done this before. I, I went from one industry to another, and then I worked up to a director in one organization and then went and became an individual contributor and a sort of a strategy consultant in a totally different uh, company. So you can do these kind of moves as long as you continue to learn and build that broad base of experience. It's all sort of Lego blocks building up to a, a more, um, senior role like an IT director. So Patty, I think that is, yeah, that's that's what I had for material. I'm more curious about folks' questions and, and happy to dig in wherever it makes sense. Thank you, that was really informative. We do have a couple of questions. Um, one of them is, what is your favorite part of your job and why? <laughs> favorite part of a job? Um, I'm going to cheat and give you two. Uh, so the, <laughs> um, I would say actually the, the one of the most enjoyable parts of my job is actually getting out and talking to our users, um, getting to learn the subject matter expertise, the subject matter experts, and sort of learning that domain. So I work at a law firm now. Um, I really enjoy like hearing from the partners. What's working for them? What kind of uh, tools could they use and then be like, oh, well, we actually have that here. Let me sort of an adoption and awareness thing. So it's all about building that awareness and helping solve problems for them. Um, that's, that's probably my favorite. And then uh, change, uh, I, change for change's sake is not a good thing, but there's so much change going on right now. Being a part of that and helping transform organizations is, is a blast. Because I, I'm in, by end of the day, you can't tell by my sweater vest and all that, but I'm, I'm a creative and I love to build things. I used to build software and I'm a musician and artist. Now I'm building organizations and I can still find that creative, uh, uh, scratch that creative edge through that. That's great. Yeah, because you probably do something a little bit different every day, different projects. I do, yes. Yeah. Every day, every hour sometimes. That's yeah. right. And then we have another question. Um, is have you always been a good leader or did you have to develop the skill over time? Oh, that's such a good question. No, <laughs> I, was, I was a terrible leader. Uh, built it over time, built it over time. Uh, I always had the love of, of people and interacting with people and sort of help, helping. So that, that was really the base that I built off of, but I was a terrible manager on the, on the beginning. Um, I think most IT professionals are because we're we're so enamored with and love writing code and, and configuring servers and all of that that we don't like to let go. So my first couple of management roles, I was too micromanaging. I, I held on too much. I wouldn't let the team breathe and, and build on their own. And uh, so I learned that lesson. I then went completely hands off and said, no, I'm not, I'm not gonna micromanage anymore. But then I didn't give them enough support and structure. And so just sort of, it was, they were on their own, which is not effective either. Um, so you learn, you learn through making mistakes and you find that balance and moderation is really the key. Uh, and, and also coming into your own, like I, I was envious of the leaders that were very, uh, that had this clear purpose and could could rally the, the crowd and get everybody excited and all that. And that's not me. And so I always felt like something was missing. Once I stopped trying to do that and just played to my strengths and, and felt comfortable being myself, comfortable in my own skin, it got a lot easier. That's great answer, great advice. Um, another question, got scroll down. What would you recommend to a student who is interested in IT, but isn't sure which particular part of IT to pursue? Um, that is a great question. Uh, micro internships or, um, uh, yeah, micro internships or something similar where you're, you get to taste. So you get to dabble and say, let me try this for a couple of weeks, a month, it might be picking up, there's these competition sites uh, where you can actually join a uh, Innocentive. Innocentive is one of them that's trying to solve 
real world issues around like climate sustainability and Hero X is another one. So there's these projects that you can pick up and just try. And it, it's low risk because if it doesn't work out or you figure out that's not what you want to do, then, then you move on. So yeah, I, I think just trying and trying as trying different types. So don't, if you like coding, don't just do coding exercises or, or projects. Go and try doing a project management or a business analyst or network or security or something like that. Um, yeah, I would say it, it is getting increasingly hard to stay an expert on any one area because things are changing so, so quickly. That building that experience to learn something and adapt it and to, to be a, a generalist, unless you, unless you devote your entire life to sort of one thing, building one type of application, it, it's impossible to stay up. So, uh, yeah. yeah. Great. So um, our audience is mostly high school students and then the career counselors um, and career, gui um, career pathway guidance um, counselors with us today. And um, from a perspective from a high school side, what certification would you recommend, especially since um, a lot of the, the entry level positions, is there any certain certification that a student should um, start with so that way they can get their foot in the door so they can get an internship or a micro internship? Sure. Yeah, that's that is a great question because I, I actually uh, I didn't know the answer to that up until about a week ago, and I I went down and spoke at uh, Xavier University, and the professor there said, with the job market the way it is now, they're trying to hire so many people in a couple of key areas that they're if you have a degree if you have a certification we will hire you basically is what they said. Um, so the the really the really hot areas right now uh, cybersecurity. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, cloud. So think Microsoft, Azure, Amazon, AWS. This is computing resources and applications and services in these large companies' data centers. So cloud, security, and then uh, anything that's in the AI analytics space, which would mean things like Python, uh, R, which is a statistical programming language. Some of those are looking at a little bit they're tough. They're tough to just sort of pick up. But Python is something that I know they're teaching in high schools and even middle schools now that um, would be a good skill set. Great. Thank you. Does anybody else have any other questions before we move on to talking about um, data? I don't I don't want to know what the what the IT world will be like when you all are becoming IT directors. It has evolved. So I've been in the field for 25 years and it is crazy how much has changed and I, it's only accelerating. So it's exciting, terrifying and exciting at the same time. Yeah, if you if you aren't a continuous learner, this is not a field for you because it changes. I think I read an article recently saying every three years, what you learn is obsolete. So you have to keep renewing your skill set. That's correct. Yes, yes. So. 